Hi, friends. Good to see everybody. You are joining us for the first time. I'm Hannah, and we're going to celebrate Noonday Prayer. Um, we're going to use the Book of Common Prayer. So if you have one at home, you can follow along. We start on page 103. And if you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, you can just listen, or you can go to bcponline.org to follow along. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 119 for those who like to follow along. So I will give everybody a second to get situated and then we'll get started. Okay, we begin on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm is a portion of Psalm 119 although not the portion included in Noonday Prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. Um, it is uh, Tet, section Tet, um, verses 65 through 72 on page 768 of the Book of Common Prayer. So Psalm 119, verses 65 through 72 on page 768 of the Book of Common Prayer, and we'll read the verses together. O oh Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a lesson from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom built her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She slaughtered her animals, mixed her wine, and set her table. She sends out her female servants. She issues an invitation from the top of the city heights. Whoever is naive, turn aside here, she says to those who lack sense. Come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Abandon your simplistic ways and live. Walk in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, I love that. So today, January 5th, is the feast day of Sarah, Theodora, and Syncletica of Egypt, desert mothers in the fourth and fifth century. I'm so excited, and I will read to you about them now. Sarah, Theodora, and Syncletica are the three desert mothers, or Amas, whose sayings are included in the 5th century Apophthegmata Patrum, the sayings of the fathers of the desert. Whew. The collection includes 47 sayings attributed to these three women. It is related that Ama Sarah lived beside a beautiful river for 60 years, yet never lifted her eyes in distraction from prayer to look at it. She said, if I prayed God that all men should approve of my conduct, I should find myself a penitent at the door of each one, but I shall pray rather that my heart may be pure towards all. Monks often came to visit her. On one occasion, some monks came to her claiming to be from the highly regarded community of Cetus. 
and she offered them a basket of fruit from which they took the rotten fruit and left the good for her to eat. She then said to them, you are true monks of Cetus. At another time, some elderly monks, considered to be great anchorites, came to see her, hoping to humiliate her and shame her. Classic. They came to her and said, be careful not to become conceited because great anchorites are coming to see you, a mere woman. Ama Sarah only replied, according to nature, I am a woman, but not according to my thoughts. It is I who am a man and you who are women. Love that. Ama Theodora was the wife of a Roman tribune, but after his death, retired to the desert to live an ascetic life. She was consulted by many monks for her wisdom on prayer. According to one of her teachings, those who set their minds to pray are often overcome with distraction, depression, faint-heartedness, or headaches. But she relates the story of how one monk, every time he felt too ill to pray, declared, clearly I am very near death, and so I should get up and pray right now before I die. In this way, he resi resisted temptation. Yet, Ama Theodora also stressed that temptations can only be overcome through humility, rather through asceticism, for even the demons fast and keep vigil and live in desert places, but they do not have humility. <laughs> Ama Syncletica lived a life of asceticism in a tomb in Alexandria. She wrote, if you find yourself in a place, do not forsake it to go to another place, for that will harm you a great deal. Just as a bird who abandons the eggs she was sitting on prevents them from hatching, so a monastic grows cold and her faith dies when she wanders from one place to another. She also taught that it was possible to live a spiritual life within secular society, not only as a monk or a nun. There are many who live in the desert yet behave as though they were in town and they are wasting their time. It is possible to be a monastic in one's mind while living in a crowd, and it is also possible for a monastic to live in a crowd amidst her own thoughts. As you can imagine, dear readers, um, I am entranced by these desert mothers. Here's what I notice about them. Um, they all lived distinct lives. Their lives were, um, you know, Sarah lived by a tree. Um, Theodora was the wife of somebody important and then moved to the desert. Um, Syncletica lived in a tomb. Um, so they, they, their lives were distinct, but from their writings, we can learn that what they cherished about their lives and what they wanted others to know, should anyone ask, was not about their actions, but about their inner lives. And this is um, this is noteworthy to me as different from men. This is something that I relate to. I love that Syncletica said, you can be in the middle of a crowd and go someplace else more holy in your own mind. I feel that deeply. <laughs> um, perhaps it's the Enneagram 5 in me, but I often find myself in the middle of a crowd of people, except I'm somewhere totally else mentally. Um, but I think that that's important for women of their time um, because all they had at that time was their inner life, their outer lives, their lives in the world were so heavily dictated by men. They had so few rights, so little opportunities. And so their true freedom meant, their true freedom was mental and spiritual and emotional is in their inner life. And so they were thrilled to relate to the world. You can have a whole life with God, regardless of what the world makes you do with your body or your time or your actions. Um, I think that that's really quite beautiful. Um, I also think, I also think it's an important distinction. Um, I'm reminded of the scripture, like, um, that we often hear on Ash Wednesday, like, don't pray where others can hear you pray where your father hears in secret, which is a way of saying, don't pray for others, pray for you and for God. Um, don't do good things so that others will see you. Um, and, and that is something that 
these women were clocking that men were doing all around them, um, living holy lives that were just for show. Um, and so obviously, first of all, leave it to the women to be like, mm, I see right through you. And B, first of all, B number two, um, I think that it is really beautiful anytime women are um, not given full rights as humans in their society that the men are given and yet find ways to thrive in the world. Um, that is the gospel. Um, and so I am just so grateful for these desert mothers. I'm going to name all my plants, things like Sarah and Theodora and Sincletica. Delight. Um, that's what I have to say about the Desert Mothers. We're going to continue our service of noonday prayer uh, with the prayers on page 106 of the Book of Common Prayer, uh, about halfway down the page. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Fix our hearts on you, O God, in pure devotion, that aided by the example of your servants, Sarah, Theodora, and Sincletica, the vain pursuits of this world may have no hold upon us, and that by the consuming fire of your spirit, we may be changed into the image and likeness of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you in the same spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving silently or aloud. Here at Christ Church, we pray especially for Morgan, Francis and Bob, George and James, Jane, Anne, Steve, Alan, Bonnie, Catherine, Sam, Laura, Mary Jane, and any others. I pray especially for David, family. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, a little update. Um, I will not be doing noonday prayer for the next several weeks because I'm taking a class. I expect to be back um, in Lent. So I will uh, post that on Facebook next week as a reminder in case you tune in out of habit. Um, but we're going to be taking a little break from noonday prayer so I can um, take a class. Um, and then uh, and then we'll be back. So I'll keep you updated, but it was good to be with you and I will see you soon.